Hello everyone, happy you could be here. Let's dive in. Sit at my grave, season three, Ego's death, chapter six. Before everyone got settled into bed, Riley came back to talk to Arden. She hugged him and apologized for yelling, giving him a snack before saying goodnight. But Arden was still upset. Her actions were meant well, but just her doing that felt like she didn't take him seriously. It wasn't her fault for being so protective. She'd just lost a child, and he wasn't trying to cause her more stress. Regardless of his feelings or hers, he had to continue his plan of leaving. If he had have gotten the chance to tell Rin Lee about his trip before she found out, he would have had her or Bernard drive him down to the airport. It's the place he booked his flight at was far out of town. But now he was more determined than ever to handle things and get there on his own. Arden ended up sneaking out of the house while everyone was asleep. He traveled around in his neighborhood for a while before an idea came to him. Gingerly, Arden took out his phone and scrolled through his contacts. He'd been wanting to reconnect anyway, and this was the perfect excuse to. they get the chance to talk to each other before he had to go out of the states. Hello? Dad? Arden spoke into his phone. He'd taken a short ride to get close to where his dad could pick him up. Arden fell asleep for a while in the car because of the lateness of the hour. When he woke up, he still took him out to get breakfast. They had light conversation, mainly about what was around him, rather than diving into anything major. He still enjoyed just being with him for a while, and knew he'd be craving these relaxing days with nothing to do once he was on that plane. However, while he was out, Riley ended up calling him, saying he wasn't at home. She was upset, of course, but when Arden told her he left to be with his dad, she became even more hysterical. The way she responded brought back on his anger of her trying to make him stay home. Mixed with being somewhat offended, she was suggesting he shouldn't be around his dad or traveling anywhere on his own. His anger went down to the messages he left her before muting it. He kept getting mixed up in these things and trying to make sure everyone was comfortable before he left. He'd lose focus, and he simply couldn't afford it. Soon, they both made it to Easton's place. Arn gently put his luggage to one side as he stepped into the spacious room. He had nerves ripping through his belly, those excitement, also discomfort from being there. He hadn't seen much of where his dad lived when he wasn't with the family. He just assumed it was random hotels, as he always seemed so busy with work. The apartment he arrived at seemed nice. Big rooms, had a pool, jacuzzi, gym, and an in-building office. Arn hadn't expected him to live in a place like that. He never considered the family poor growing up. He always had food, clothes, and sometimes more expensive items he asked for. They didn't go on luxurious vacations and such, but with the way that apartment looked, he did find himself wondering why they didn't have more growing up. So, what do you think? You like the place? Easton questioned. He shoved a sheet of paper in his pocket as he waltzed over to his beanbag chairs. Yeah, looks nice. Aaron commented, looking around, taking it in. Easton smirked. And your mom? Is Renly still in that other house? Easton asked. Arn looked at him in a bit of a shock. Renly had been so careful in speaking about Easton, avoiding it all she could until recently, yet he asked about her so freely. We, uh, we live with Grandma now, Arn responded, coming over to sit with him. Ugh, of course. She was always running to that old hag, Easton muttered. Arn frowned a bit. He heard his dad express his dislike for her before. Arn himself had always been on good terms with his grandmother, and even more recently, they'd all gotten closer. She'd take them in when they needed it. So hearing those insults now felt a bit more heavy. So, she couldn't keep up with the payments is what I'm hearing. Easton questioned with a satisfied smirk. Well, she didn't want to stay in the house anymore either, Arden told him. Sure, after all that whining about having a home... She can't even keep it together. She never could make up her mind, though, so I guess I'm not shocked. Easton continued on. So, how have you been, Dad? Arn tried to steer the conversation away from Ren Lee, so it was getting a bit disconcerting. In the back of his mind, he couldn't help but wonder what else his mother was thinking about him being there. He knew she was upset because of his past rough treatment towards her, because of Easton's cheating. At the time of finding out about it, and hearing them argue firsthand, before Renly asked him for a divorce, Arn did feel a little disappointed and shocked himself. But this was still his dad, his only hero. He was hoping for some type of advice from him before he left. He knew it would be a big change traveling to wherever fate had planned. 
He'd been wanting to speak to Easton at some point, but even now, more than ever, he craved his guidance. Me? Funny you should ask now. I hardly got any calls from anyone. Until you needed my help. What, to really ban you or something? Easton asked, standing up. Erwin carefully stood up with him. Not exactly, I just... I've been busy. Erwin insisted. Busy doing what? What's got your eye after graduation? Easton questioned as he began walking towards the kitchen. Arden followed, stealing a few more glances at the area around him. He noticed after some of the awe began wearing off that the place did look a bit messy. Nothing major from what he could see, just piles of clothes here and there, despite a few empty bottles as well. Arden, hey! Easton spoke up again, getting his attention. What have you been up to? he asked. Uh, well I did a couple jobs, Arden told him. He wished that was all he had been busy with. He knew he hadn't been that lucky. Ah, I see. What type? Are you looking for a career or just looking for some extra cash? He snacked. He filled his glass back up. That's what Arden guessed from looking at the bottle. Alcohol. Just trying to earn some money for now, Arden told him. He watched uncomfortably as Easton drank. Arden always had a poor opinion on people getting drunk. From what he'd seen, it just made them louder and more obnoxious. Something for dirty people only seek thrills, despite bothering those around them. Arnie flinched gently, hearing and seeing his dad gulp down more, before refilling his glass. He knew of his mom and dad's past now, of course. They just assumed Easton wasn't doing it that much anymore, as he was clearly a successful businessman. But his thoughts didn't matter when the sight before him told the truth. That's good. It's nice getting out there, making your own cash. But you know, you could have just asked me if you needed a little walking around money. I would have helped you out, Easton told him. He reached across the counter where Arden stood and sloppily punched his arm. Arden's lips curved up slightly, just a reminder of growing up. Seeing Easton send over letters when he'd been away, sometimes sending him allowance. It wasn't a lot, but back then, he was excited to get it. Easton would even send him extra if he really wanted to buy something. That was besides the occasional, more expensive gifts he'd get for a birthday or holiday. One memory just ran to the next, but what Arden really appreciated it, especially now, was the letters when he would write to him about the things he was interested in at the time. Most people ostracized him for what he enjoyed, so the fact that his father cared and took the time to try and engage with it really meant a lot. Easton would hardly talk about those things on the phone or in person, but he always took time to write to him. It was their special thing together, and as a child, Arden always looked forward to it. Thanks, Arden mumbled. Easton grinned before ruffling his hair. I did want to ask you for something, though. Arden admitted, eyeing his dad, who began slouching while he started to sip another drink. Huh? Oh, that's right. Here I am being greedy. Here, have one. He's not offered Arden his alcohol. Arden sneered at it, pushing it back. I don't drink, Arden told him. If it were anyone else, he would have been far more offended. He was even a little upset with his dad for offering, but he tried to brush it aside. <laughs> what? You don't drink? Aren't you 20 or something already? He's not chuckled, taking another swig. What does an age have to do with not wanting to lose my coherency? Arn replied haughtily. Easton arched an eyebrow at him with a glare, making Arn bite his tongue a little. Besides, I'm not 20 yet, Arn further explained. Oh, well, whatever. Following rules all the time doesn't get you anywhere. Just on a strict path other people mapped out for you. Easton rolled his eyes. Arn tilted his head slightly, listening to him. He didn't agree with that about drinking but it didn't make him think of his own personal rules and morals. What he thought was so right and fair had taken him on a completely different path, one that he dreaded.